Sunday, we greet you to our worship service at Hope Lutheran Church, and today we also begin a new message series entitled Victorious, with today's theme being Jesus Lives, the Victories Won. All of our <clears throat> Bible readings today come from either the Evangelical Heritage Version of the Bible or from the NIV 11. All music falls under our licenses and are used with permission. We feature today our Wisconsin Lutheran Seminary Choir and also our choir from Martin Luther College. God bless your worship as we begin with Sing the Song of Glory Now. Jesus is risen indeed. 
death has been swallowed up in victory. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Please join me now in the confession of sins, as is our custom. We have come into the presence of God who created us to love and to serve Him as His dear children. But we have disobeyed Him and deserve only His wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us confess our sins to Him and plead for His mercy. Merciful Father in Heaven, I am altogether sinful from birth. In countless ways I have sinned against You and do not deserve to be called Your child. But trusting in Jesus, my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to Your unfailing love. Cleanse me from my sin and take away my guilt. God our Heavenly Father has forgiven all your sins. By the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ, He has removed your guilt forever. You are His own dear child. May God grant you strength to live according to His will. Amen. Please join with me now in the prayer for Easter Sunday, the Resurrection of our Lord. Almighty God, by the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, you conquered death and opened the gate to eternal life. Grant that we, who have been raised with him through baptism, may walk in newness of life and ever rejoice in the hope of sharing his glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be dominion and praise, now and forever. Amen. Psalm 118 is the psalm traditionally used for Easter Sunday. We hear one verse of that. This is the day the Lord has made, being sung.
this Easter Sunday is the resurrection chapter, select verses from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, beginning with verse 12. Now if it is preached that Christ has been raised from the dead, how is it that some among you say that there is no resurrection from the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is pointless, and your faith is pointless too. Then we are even guilty of giving false testimony about God, because we testified about God that He raised Christ, whom He did not raise, if it were true, that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, you are still in your sins. Then it is also follows that those who fall asleep in Christ perished. If our hope in Christ applies only to this life, we are the most pitiful people of all. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Now I say this, brothers, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. And what is perishable is not going to inherit what is imperishable. Look, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a moment, in a blink of the eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For this perishable body must put on imperishability, and this mortal body must put on immortality. But once this perishable body has put on imperishability, and this mortal body has been put on immortality, then what is written will be fulfilled. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Death, where is your sting? Great, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. This is God's word. Our next hymn is His Battle Ended There. For those of you that have Christian worship, a Lutheran hymnal at home, you can turn to hymn number 146 if you care to follow along with the words.
gospel for the resurrection of our Lord comes to us today from St. Mark's Gospel, chapter 16, beginning with verse 1. As we read and listen to this wonderful message, we offer up our hallelujahs, our praises to the Lord for the resurrection of Jesus. When the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so they could go and anoint Jesus. Very early on the first day of the week, at sunrise, they went to the tomb. They were saying to each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance to the tomb for us? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting at the right side. They were alarmed. He said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him? But go, tell his disciples and Peter, He is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. They went out and hurried away from the tomb, trembling and perplexed. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. This is God's word. We now will listen, and you can join along to sing Crown Him with Money Crowns uh, as we uh, turn to hymn number 341. <laughs> Thank you. 
Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Savior Jesus Christ, who lived here for a time, who suffered for the sins of the world and then died, but who lives. Amen. Picture this. A rider on a horse is riding on a racetrack with a scythe, a big sickle, a thing for chopping down wheat in his hand. As you look at this picture, you notice that the rider is going the wrong direction on the racetrack. He's going clockwise. And everybody knows that in American horse racing, they go counterclockwise. Now, why is it that this pale rider is riding the opposite direction with an instrument of killing in his hand? Simple. He catches every single horse and every single rider and cuts them down before they get to the finish line. That's true for all of us, that pale rider known as death. He cuts us all down. He will cut me down before I meet the finish line of eternal life. He'll cut down your family and your friends, people you know and many you don't know. And no one can escape this rider. This picture actually was painted by an artist whose name is Albert Ryder. And the picture hangs today in the Cleveland Museum of Art. It's an interesting picture that artist Ryder painted back in 1888. And you know why he wrote, why he painted this picture? It's because on one day in that year, a friend of his put down $500 on a horse to win the race. Now, $500 in 1888, that's a lot of money. And he lost. Despairing of that loss, he went and committed suicide. And Albert Ryder painted his grief. Why begin an Easter Sunday worship service talking about death? In Revelation chapter 6, the pale horse is the horseman called death. And he rides around cutting every single human soul down. A former member used to tell me, this was back in my first congregation. He said, you know the problem with people, Pastor? And I said, Joe, no, what? He said, people think they can get out of life alive. We see that with the fear of this pandemic. Everybody's afraid they're going to, yeah, they're going to die. Maybe not of that virus, but of some because of the virus that infects us all. The Bible calls that sin, and the wages for sin is still death. Now, if we linger on the death part, then we will never have victory in the Lord Jesus. You know, even those people that watched Jesus die on Good Friday, the women and Joseph and Nicodemus who buried Jesus in the new tomb of Arimathea, Joseph of Arimathea, it looked like death won. But Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. He is victorious. Jesus won the victory. It's because of that victory that we look forward to our own victory from the dead. As the writer, St. John, wrote in his Revelation of Jesus Christ, according to St. John, in chapter 19, verses 11 to 16. That's our text for this Easter. <clears throat> John writes, I saw heaven standing open, and there was a white horse. Its rider is called Faithful and True, and he judges and makes war in righteousness. His eyes are like blazing flames, and on his head are many crowns. He has a name written on him which no one knows except he himself. He is also clothed in a garment that has been dipped in blood, and his name is the Word of God. 
The armies in heaven, which were clothed with white, clean, fine linen, were following him on white horses. Out of his mouth comes a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations. He will shepherd them with an iron staff. He himself is going to trample the winepress of the fierce anger of the Almighty One. On his garment and on his thigh, this name is written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. This is God's Word. The victory is won. Our Savior is alive, not dead. But on Friday, he died. There's no doubt of the fact that Jesus Christ died on Good Friday. The soldiers proved that when they stuck a knife up into him. He died and was buried in that tomb. He gave up his life for his sheep as he had promised. He suffered the penalty of God inflicting, God inflicting his great terror and his punishment on sin for the guilt of the world. He died on that Friday for the sins of the world, for you and for me and for all people. But he arose from the dead. The scriptures make that abundantly clear. There's all kinds of evidence of the eyewitnesses that saw Jesus alive again. John saw him on this day when he had that vision I saw heaven standing open, John wrote, and there was a white horse. Its rider is called Faithful and True. Did you ever notice how truth and faithfulness go hand in hand? If you don't have truth, what are you faithful to? If you are faithful, you have to be faithful to truth. Otherwise, you're faithful to a lie. He is called the faithful one because he fulfilled all the promises that God had made for us. It is true. What God said in his word in the Old Testament is true in the New because Jesus Christ lives. And without the resurrection, everything that God said is a lie. Then God is not faithful. Then we who die, die in unbelief, and we die never to rise again, or at best, be in hell forever. The rider on the white horse, Jesus Christ, is called the Word of God, because the Word is faithful, and the Word is true. Earlier in his revelation, John wrote to the angel of the church of Laodicea, right? These are the words of the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the ruler of God's creation. Or right back at the greeting in chapter 1, he writes, Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness. There is no truth from God if Jesus is dead. If he was just a great teacher who moralized for people of his day, and maybe even helps us as we journey on this thing called life, then we are, as Paul says, to be pitied more than all people. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead. Jesus lives. You know, Jesus met death up close and conquered it. Every human at one time or another will have to face death. We will come face to face with death unless Jesus returns first. But Jesus lives. In verse 11, we hear, He judges and makes war in righteousness. That's quite an interesting phrase in the scripture, in righteousness. To be in righteousness means to be without guilt. The Greek word dikaiosine, zine, the uh, dikaio, or the verb form of that, means to declare not guilty or to acquit. Acquit. In righteousness, he took on the sins of the world, the righteous one for the unrighteous to bring you to God. In righteousness, he gave up his life as the sacrificial lamb. And it was in righteousness, because of his righteousness, that his father raised him from the dead. Jesus met death up close and kicked it in the eye. 
punched it in the nose, and came triumphant from the grave. And because of that, you and I have God's undeserved free gift of love. And you know that's the definition for the word grace. And we also have peace. Maybe not in our times, but we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. A peace that the world cannot know. We know because of his faithfulness and truth. Jesus met death up close and won a victory over it. The first fruits of all those who fall asleep. Here's what John says at the beginning of Revelation. Grace and peace to you. You see, we have grace and peace. Why? It comes from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood, he has made us to be a kingdom of priests, to serve his God and Father. To him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming on the clouds. And every eye will see him, even those who pierced him, the ones who crucified him. And all peoples on the earth will mourn because of him. So shall it be. Amen. Indeed, amen. Do you believe this? Christ has indeed been raised from the dead. And we have no doubt about that. Jesus arose. It is the foundation of the Christian faith. This teaching taught more than any other teaching in the Bible. How can we be sure? There were a lot of witnesses that saw Jesus alive again. Even though the Roman soldiers who were guarding the tomb of Jesus came back and reported, and the Jewish leaders, what did they do? Remember? They bribed them to keep quiet. That didn't work, did it? Throughout the centuries, there have been times of persecution where governments have tried to keep people from sharing that Jesus lives. How did that work out? We're still proclaiming the resurrection today. Even death has tried to silence the witness of the resurrection, and it doesn't work. Because Jesus Christ has indeed been raised from the dead. That is the victory he won. The Apostle Paul tells us about all these witnesses in chapter 15 of 1 Corinthians, beginning with verse 3. For what I received, I passed on to you as of the first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the Scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, that St. Peter, and then to the twelve, the other disciples, after that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers in Christ at the same time, most of whom are still living, although some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, and last of all, he appeared to me also. This message went out after Pentecost into all the world. Do you think that these people would have agreed to hear that message if it weren't true? They were eyewitnesses of Jesus' glory, and they shared it with the world. We do not have to fear that we have a lie here. But we walk by faith, not by sight. The same faith that Martha expressed, we express this Easter, and every single Sunday. That's why the Church of the New Testament worships on Sunday. And every single day of our lives, and once we are raised on the last day, we'll proclaim this living truth forever and ever as we sing our hallelujah chorus in heaven. Remember, Lazarus died. And Jesus stayed at the outskirts of the city, and Martha came out to him in her grief at the loss of her brother. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me will live, even if he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never perish. Do you believe this? Remember what Martha said? Yes, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. 
And that's what we confess this Easter and every day. Jesus won the victory. Our Savior's alive, not dead, and so His Word is true. He has been faithful to us. You are forgiven and have the hope of heaven. Now this particular text is kind of interesting. It's why I started out with that picture at the beginning of death, because our Savior, according to this text, also has authority on Judgment Day. Now if you think about it, there are bookends to the New Testament church. One side is Easter Sunday, and the other side is Judgment Day, when Jesus raises all of the dead. The text says, his eyes are like blazing flames, and on his head are many crowns. You see the idea of the crown here, this is not the Stephanus, the victory crown, this is the royal crown, the diadem. And every time he defeats another king, another enemy, he takes their crown. And as we say, crown him with many crowns, that's where it comes from, by the way, laying the crowns on Jesus' head. His, he has a name written on him which no one knows except he himself. He is also clothed in a garment that has been dipped in blood, and his name is the Word of God. The armies of heaven, these are the angel armies, by the way, which were clothed with white, clean, fine linen, were following him on white horses. You notice they don't have any blood on them at all. They weren't part of winning the victory. They just followed the Lamb. Out of his mouth came a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations. This sword is not the double-edged sword that we hear of at other places in the Scripture. What sword, what part of the sword of God cuts down people? That's the law and judgment that follows, okay? So that's the word here. And he will shepherd them with an iron staff. So it shows domination. He himself is going to trample the winepress of the fierce anger of the Almighty God. Then on his garment, on his thigh, the name is written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Kind of reminds you of a sporting event and the names are written, the team name, you know, and their name written on the uniform. I don't know if you know this or not, but that's the last picture that we see of Christ in the scriptures. Under verbal inspiration, this is the last picture that has been written about our Savior. And I wonder why this picture of the righteous judge, the victor, not only over sin and death, but over the enemies. I think it's because he wants to make an impression on us of what's coming. Not only did he win a victory on Easter Sunday, he wins the victory over all his enemies, and death itself will be put in the ground when Jesus returns on the last day. Now, when he heard about this blood dipped on his garments, you may have thought of Christ dying on the cross, you know, his blood, which cleanses us from every sin. But that's not what it is here. This is the blood of his enemies. And that's what Isaiah was talking about, and John quoted here from Isaiah 63, verse 2 and 3. Why is your clothing so red? Why are your garments like those of someone who has been trampling grapes in a wine press? I have trodden the Rhine press alone, he says, and from the peoples there was no one with me. So I stomped on them in my anger, and I trampled them in my wrath, and their juice, that's blood, splattered on my garments. I stained all my clothing. Why this anger and judgment? Because God is serious about sin and unbelief. The testimony of Christ, his work, and his resurrection is evident. We believe it because God brought us to faith through the powerful working of his spirit, through the gospel. But there are many out there that still are enemies of the cross. Sometimes they even use health scares to shut churches down. We see that happening across our country and throughout the world today. And yes, we want to keep people safe and use our judgment to protect our neighbors. But the church cannot be shut down. And in the end, all those who oppose Christ 
will be trampled in the wine press of his wrath. Don't wait. Don't delay. Believe in Jesus Christ who washes sin away with his blood, for the blood of Jesus his son cleanses us from every sin. He arose to demonstrate his power over death and over sin. He lives today to demonstrate his power over all unbelief with his powerful gospel. And on Judgment Day, he will stand triumphant with all the crowns of all his enemies. Delay not, because Christ the Lord has risen indeed. That's our, that's our victory. One more point to make this morning. Those with the Savior are safe forever. Because Jesus lives, believers live. Now, everybody has to make a decision, I suppose, as to whether or not God is faithful and true, or the sinful nature or the philosophies of this world are faithful and true. We can't, by our own choosing, choose to follow Christ and believe in something that just is so absurd, a body rising from the dead. But Christ indeed has risen from the dead. Jesus won the victory, and that means those who believe are safe with him forever. Believers who die in the Lord now will rest from their labors, but they will be raised to life again on the last day. And those who believe in Jesus and his resurrection now, people like us, we will serve him with our hearts and our hands and our voices. We will give to him everything because they all are his anyhow, and we are his, so we will give ourselves into service to him. And because Jesus lives, we are going to continue to proclaim this wonderful message that through faith in Jesus Christ, you have forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation. That's why we rejoice on Easter. That's why we rejoice every Sunday. That's why we rejoice every day of our lives because we have no fear of our enemy, Satan, for Jesus already crushed his head. We have no fear of death, for Jesus arose victorious over it. Uh, that doesn't mean we don't become afraid of the dying process, of course, but death itself has no terror for us. We have no fear in living now either, because Jesus lives for us. We have no fear in facing God on Judgment Day, because we stand clothed in the righteous robes of Jesus Christ as his dear children, forgiven and saved. Oh, and one more thing. We have no fear over the enemies, for we know Christ destroys them all. We know, we believe, and we live for Jesus who is alive, not dead. Jesus has won the victory for us, a victory that will stand the test of eternity. Because death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. God grant you that lasting victory now and to all eternity. Amen. We now sing Christian worship hymn 149, Christ the Lord is risen today.
Easter Sunday morning. Thanks be to you, O Lord, for giving us the victory through your Son, Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, you have not forsaken us or left us to our own destruction, but kept your ancient promise to send the Savior. We praise you for his perfect life, his innocent death, and his glorious resurrection. Because of your faithfulness to your promises, today is a day of victory. Savior Jesus, we praise you for carrying out God's plan of salvation. Your resurrection is undeniable evidence that you have triumphed over sin, death, hell, and the devil. Because of your resurrection, today is a day of victory. Holy Spirit, we praise you that through the gospel, you have led us to know and believe that Jesus is our risen Savior. Today we say confidently, as did the angel, he is not here, he has risen. Preserve us in faith. Raise us to newness of life. Continue to lavish on us the blessings of this day of victory. Try in God. Kindle in our hearts a love for all people. Equip us with both the will and the words to tell others that Jesus has indeed risen from the grave. Use us to share the message of the empty tomb so that others too may rejoice in Jesus' Easter victory. Lord of life, comfort all who stand at death's door today. Comfort all who mourn the loss of a loved one who has died in faith in the risen Savior. Comfort each of us with the assurance that because Jesus lives, we too will live. Remind us all that the death of a Christian is not a defeat. Because of Jesus, it is a day of victory. Today, we offer up special prayers that have been requested. Um, we will pray for Dick, who is undergoing some severe physical issues, for Marilyn, who is in the hospital recovering from pneumonia, and also for Daryl, who will undergo surgery this coming Tuesday. Almighty God, the consolation of the sorrowful and the strength of the weak, hear the prayers of those who cry out to you in sickness or sorrow, in trouble or distress this day, and listen to us as we proclaim our prayers to you in their behalf. Grant relief to those suffering pain, comfort to those who mourn and recovery to those burdened by illness and disease, like Dick and Marilyn, or like Daryl, who will undergo surgery. Look with compassion on these, your servants, as well as those who are homeless today, the destitute, those whose inner hurts we cannot see, and all who have none to care for them. Soothe and heal all who are broken in body, mind, or spirit, and bring us all to the perfect peace and rest of heaven. Comfort us with the assurance that our sins are forgiven for Jesus' sake. Because he has risen from the dead, guilt no longer remains. Now, Heavenly Father, help us to live according to your word as your people. Thanks be to you, O Lord, for giving us the victory through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ the one who has taught us to pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And now we see with believing hearts the Lord's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look on you with favor and grant you peace. Amen.
Now we conclude our worship with hymn number 219, Lord, when your glory I shall see. risen he's risen indeed thank you for joining with us on our Easter worship today feel free to contact us through our website with any comments or or thoughts we'd love to hear from you also please join us this Wednesday evening for the live streaming of this week's edition of cross chant uh, this week we're going to talk about the witnesses to the resurrection and so hopefully you'll be able to join us then and Sunday again next week, we'll be worshiping at the same time at 9 o'clock. And remember, if you miss the live streaming, it's always archived. You can watch it later on in the day or any day during the week. God bless and keep you all in Jesus Christ.